Hi, this is Greg in Pensacola, Florida. I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Tonight is part eight on the modular in build with Hearth Starts Molds, and we're going to talk about building the booth. Uh, if you look on the screen, the last time we finished off, we just finished the Hobbit room and we finished the bar, and now we're going to move on to the booth. And this is going to be probably one of our the most advanced room that we have built so far, maybe in terms of time and things that we haven't used yet as part of this build. So. If we look up here at the beginning, uh, I'm building the booth. The first thing you're going to look at is that we've got six of these little windows right here that are part of this project. So that in itself, mounting the windows is not the, the simplest thing. It's not hard. It's just one of those things that you got to stick that window in there and you just got to kind of be careful of handling the piece because until it tacks up and sets up really good, it's... um they have a tendency to shift if you're not careful and you we will have to sand these down so on these edges right here they're going to have to be sanded down to fit inside this window uh, then we built two other blocks two other walls right here and so these you know pretty simple walls both with 45s on there so those are going to be our corner pieces and then we start looking at the inside of this booth so over here if you look we got three tables and we got six chairs that are benches that are going to go around it. We've got a divider. We got two dividers, and we got another little stubby wall that's just going to sit one place on the uh, outside. And then down here, we have kind of a divider because we haven't built them yet, but we're going to build these floor pieces that don't have any walls around them. And these are going to be your hallways that go in between all these pieces. So right in front of this, on this edge of this mold, let's see if we come down here and look. There's gonna be a hallway piece right here. So when they step out, you know, this is another place that they're gonna step out onto. And you'll have a long hallway right here that'll go down. So that bench would be correct in that position. Um, so we're gonna put this together. Looks like we're gonna to have to sand the sides of these to put them in there. And uh, you know, then hopefully when we're done, it's gonna look like this. Well, I'm glad to say this was probably the longest room so far, but it came out really nice. Uh, this was a fun build because now we're starting to, to get into using some of the furniture, you know, because we, we cast those in accessory molds on there. So now we're going to start bringing these into play. So I haven't mounted anything onto the tables yet. You know, they're kind of plain like they are here. I may later on, you know, I know some of the tables that I do put together. I'm going to put fruits, bowls, cups, and have it glue those onto the top because those pieces are small. So when we get to that stage, you're going to see just how small they are, you know, in relation to the, you know, the back of this uh, paintbrush right here. I've got pieces as small as that tip at the end. Um, so this part right here went together really good. I had to go back um, when I finished putting the walls together. I had done the, uh, the dry brushing on there. And when it was done, I was like, oh, man, that looks a little heavy-handed. You know, and I was kind of hemming and hawing. It wasn't that bad, but I'm like, that's the nice thing about working with these Hearth Starts molds is that it's it's really forgiving on these pieces because there's so much detail and the recesses are so big. It's not like painting a miniature model, you know, for a war game or for a D&D &D fig that the more layers of paint that you put on, the more detail you obscure these are huge pieces you know that you're dealing with so i'm like you know what let me just take hit it back over with the base coat of gray and uh just re-highlight it again on there so i did that before i went to bed last night got up this morning about seven o'clock came in did the two uh highlight colors on there so i used all three high you know the base coat and the two highlights and uh much happier with the results the windows we had to sand down the sides on there, so it, they went in. Once I got the hang of where one of them was, I was like, all right, I knew how much to take off. All this was pretty standard, you know, and at the end, it was just more or less coming out with paint scheme. So I finished this up today, and I'm really happy. Let's see if I can actually get it on the screen. Um, I'm really happy with how this came out on there. You know, so we're using on the, on the floor right here. It's just our normal uh, base coat, one highlight. Of the floor like we've been doing on the these beams themselves right here this is all three highlights we did all three highlights in here and you can see the stained glass windows are all through there 
the side piece is just pretty normal on the side here's our we got our windows so those are the six windows again yellow on the outside blue on the inside the one opening right here and then see if I can just kind of rotate different angles so this is really came out I think it's a really good looking piece on there it went together nice I got to use some different colors and things so uh, the first thing I had to do you know when you start setting when I paint a miniature for like War Machine let's say if I have a unit of 10 guys I have to paint one guy first from start to finish that sets my color for the rest of the unit on there I know other people paint different they can see that finished piece at the end so they will sit there and um, paint all 10, 12 guys all at once. I'm not like that. I like to sit there and start and work my colors. And when it's done, I'm like, okay. And then I can replicate that across. So I always joke that like my first mini takes four hours to do. And then it takes me four hours to paint the rest on there. So uh, the first thing I wanted to do is Bruce had that red color. If you remember the last video, uh, that little baker's door well here let me grab it real quick what is it's this door right here i like that red color i really wanted to replicate that so i was down at walmart where i usually am and uh i went over to the apple barrel section to paint because my daughters have used up most of all my old craft paint so i'm like eh, let me get some new stuff so this right here that red color is this apple barrel chocolate bar is the color that I use for that and then I highlighted it with a uh, oh not that with a khaki so that's and these are all matte colors I bought all matte I'm not going to do anything in gloss except the wine bottles and stuff like that and I have a clear gloss that I'll paint over that so everything I'm buying so I did about a, uh, a three to one three red one drop of the khaki as my first highlight color and then I put a drop of white on there and did another highlight color on the red um, it got a little bit white so I just went back with just some red and a super light just to knock the the whiteness off the top of the highlight and so I think it came out pretty good the booths are uh, base coated and territorial beige uh, again apple barrel color so I did all that right here and then uh, I did the first highlight color. I mixed in a drop of uh, a khaki. So I put that in there. And then I grabbed uh, a drop of white and then put that in there also for the third highlight. So there's three levels of highlight on the bench itself right here. And then the seat cushion, because I wanted to throw some type of contrast on it, I just went back and painted in a khaki color. So that my benches throughout most of this in are going to be in this style I may change the uh, the cushion color depending on what room it might be in but I do like these tables in this red when I do the bar the actual bar itself I want to make sure I replicate it in this color there's going to be some chest of drawers I do like yeah so I'm a big fan of Calvary Brown that's a Vallejo color that's a really deep red or whole reds and stuff like that so I like those kind of colors you know so for me I'm gonna integrate that into my furniture uh, the metallics I always want to make sure that my hinges my knobs my door you know the things that should be metallic have a nice popping metallic on them you know that way it'll it'll all flow together you know on the build but I'm really happy how the booth came out it uh, I'm trying to see time wise Obviously the floor went right together. You know, we're talking 30 minutes on the on the floor to, to set it and put the base coat on it. Um, the walls were not bad. It was a little tricky putting this corner together here. This corner got a little fragile pushing it together, so just be careful on that. Uh, the, the longest part was probably painting the booths and then this piece right up here because you do this into three levels of earth tone and then I came back and did the benches and the highlighting of the benches. So I didn't worry about painting this at first. I did all this that way. If I got any of that brown color on here, I knew I was going to paint over it. But then I came back with that territorial beige, the two levels of highlights, and then the khaki color on the cushions, and then called it good. And this was that one little 
single piece right here. So we've got two ways in. We've got room for the figs to stand in here. Um, obviously, they're not going to sit in the bench. You know, it's not scaled for that. But, uh, you know, it's a good piece. So this was the most fun piece to do so far. So uh, I just finished this up. I really haven't looked ahead yet uh, at what's next. I know we've got, I believe, it's two bedrooms that are next that don't look too bad. I think the rooms that come up, there's uh, a bedroom with some type of column in it. There's a bedroom with something that's recessed. So we're adding some detail into these smaller rooms, but I don't think they're going to be too bad. So maybe another week, maybe by next weekend, we're going to be completely done with the rooms because now I'm at five rooms. I'm looking on the table. Yeah. So I've got five of the eight done. So yeah, we're progressing right along. This is, this is moving quick. Uh, Still, there's no, you know, I like the method we're still doing on this. We're painting, we're finishing as we go. That way, we're not sitting there with a mound of stuff to paint at the end. Uh, I think I have a day off coming up here pretty quick. I might lay out a bunch of those accessories and film, put them together, and then painting them. Because when we get to the end, we're going to need to accessorize all these rooms. So, you know, the... The Hobbit bedroom is not going to be just a plain square room. You know, we're going to put a bed in here. We're going to put stuff along the walls. You know, we've got trophy placards and all kinds of stuff that are over there, you know. So that's where we're really going to get to basically bling out the end. So, again, one more look around on there. Backside with the windows. And then one more look up in. I'll just twist it every direction. Yeah, so everything's glued in there. And uh, I'm really happy with how that came out. So thanks for watching tonight. If you like the video, please like it. If you like the channel, please subscribe. If you know some friends that are into Hurt Starts or thinking about getting into Hurt Starts, send them this way. There's a bunch of us on YouTube. Uh, you know, doing some of the Hurt Start stuff now. There's some older channels that are still pumping out videos, so it's a good time. You know, you can never have enough content, and uh, I'm really happy because I may build it next week, but definitely by the end of this project, before the next project, got something really cool I want to show you that's going to help with speed, help, you know, keep your projects moving along, I think, at a relative pace. Because what I found, you know, with starting getting more and more and more of this stuff on the table, it's taking up more and more and more of my table. Um, and I have a large table, but I also have an airbrush booth on here. I've got all my war machine stuff on here. So it's kind of splitting, it's splitting space with my other hobby of war machine and stuff like that. So, um, but good, we got some good organizational stuff. We're going to do some, I like to call it advanced casting. On the, you know, the it's fine if you want to cast just a couple molds, but what happens if you're sitting there looking at 50 molds? And when we get to this Gothic Dungeon project, we're going to be casting a metric ton, and we do not want to sit there and guess on our measurements and things like that. So maybe kind of an advanced casting, you know, and uh, we'll see how you guys like that. But we're just going to keep on pushing forward. We're going to try and knock out a couple more rooms. Maybe we'll get all three of them by next weekend. And uh, I'll see you in that next video. Again, thanks for watching. Please like it if you liked the video. And subscribe if you like the channel. Have a good night.